contained fire. It went to a food farm very quickly. Uh, we got called to Erie Street. As I said, it went to a food farm very quickly. We have 160 firefighters, 60 pieces of apparatus on scene at this time. It is primarily commercial structures. We have 100 workers displaced from those commercial structures. We do have one firefighter injured, moderate injuries. He has been transported to San Francisco General. We have this fire approximately 75% contained, but we have stopped its forward progress. Our members have done an incredible job out here, and this is what we train for. This is why we train. And it, look, it may look like a whole bunch of spaghetti on the ground and everything else, but these folks know exactly what they're doing because of the hard work they do every day training. So uh, I will let um, our Deputy Chief of Operations give you just a little briefing uh, in terms of what he knows about the fire. His name is Victor Warsh. Good morning, everybody. Deputy Chief of Operations, Victor Wirsch, W-Y-R-S-C-H. I got here on a second alarm. It was fully involved, the fire building, and rapidly moving to the second building. And the rapid succession from a, from a first, second, third, fourth to fifth was very quick. Uh, when I got there, we had a huge problems of power lines on the Erie Street side. Uh, we actually had transformers falling on the ground. I had to back everybody up. We had to reposition as it was uh, proceeding to get into the third building, and then another the fourth building at that time, extremely rapidly. Uh, everybody did a fantastic job, as aggressive you can be at a defensive fire. Uh, I wanna thank PG&E, because uh, they got the power line shut down as quick as they can, and a special shout out to the water department. Uh, we have a wonderful relationship with them. We had to use our high pressure system. We, were, we didn't have adequate water people that saw this at the very beginning were lobbing water with not a tremendous amount of pressure It's because we exceeded all the hydrants so we started using our high pressure system we used our Jones Street tank then we went up to our Ashbury Street tank and now we're flowing water all the way from Twin Peaks all the way down here so we got a hundred million gallons going and uh, we're doing a really good job uh, like I said we have one one injured member I'm gonna go visit him in the hospital he said he was okay he's a tough guy but we're gonna go check on him anyway what, kind of fire? what are these buildings Pardon me? What are these buildings? Uh, so the initial biggest fire building appears to be a roofing store, a roofing uh, supply uh, warehouse. Have yeah. you heard that one of the buildings was owned by the Sheriff's Department? Correct. That was, a, that was the first building I went inside to check to make sure everything was okay. There was a sheriff inside. I asked him to get the, his most important equipment out. Uh, they had a lot of, uh, he said he had ammo in the, uh, in the basement, so I had him. I said, get all the ammo you can out, get everything out. It was a concrete building, so he was in a safe position. I made sure with the sheriff's department that he was out okay, and they got everything out okay. Uh, we made a good stop at his building. We got firefighters on the roof to curtain down so it didn't penetrate the sheriff's building. And right now I have companies inside with salvage covers covering their computers to make sure nothing gets wet. So we, we, should, we should be good, uh, hopefully. So it started at the roofing company, as far as you know? I, I can't comment on that. We don't know. Like I said, that building uh, was fully involved when I got here. Like I said, it rapidly went into the second building within a matter of minutes. Do you think there's been inspections of any of these buildings and problematic? Uh, I, I do not know at this point right now. I have to, to wait for the one, investigation. One more, one more question for the deputy. Uh, when I got here, I didn't see anything except for uh, burning buildings. You know? There was a transformer that exploded. Do you know if that happened before or after the fire? That happened after. Okay. So the uh, the power line, the power pole was on fire. Uh, we had to, like I said, again, uh, the, the, they positioned themselves correctly for a single building fire initially. But when it rapidly changed, we had to move a bunch of apparatus back, move some hose. Uh, the, the, uh, the pole caught on fire instantaneously and the transformer came down in a matter of minutes. But it wasn't started from, uh, I can't comment, but I, that's, uh, that happened afterwards. What sort of injury is this to the firefighter? Uh, this is one of our chief, one of our chiefs, and uh, and uh, he just got a look, just knocked in the head a little bit. He's fine. He's fine. We had to force him to go. It's, it's just abundance of caution. He's a tough guy. I'll take any further questions related to this incident. Well, I think, can you just go through what buildings are on fire and what people inside, or were they all in yeah, so we had occupied and unoccupied commercial buildings stretching from South Van S to Folsom Street between Erie Street and between 14th Street. There's a, these are two full city blocks with large commercial grade buildings that are in there. 
Um, and as the chief stated earlier, this was a rapidly progressing fire that started at 6.30 and quickly grew to a fifth alarm fire involving up to six buildings, uh, addresses forthcoming uh, after we get into the investigatory phase. The one injury to our firefighter was sustained while that firefighter was in firefighting operations. And that firefighter, who is a chief officer, will be okay, currently being treated at General Hospital. San Francisco Fire Investigators are currently on scene investigating this fire, so a number of the questions you're asking now will merely be speculative in response from us until we can confirm with our fire investigators what the cause and origin is. What we can again confirm is this is involving up to six commercial buildings. This involves one injury being a firefighter. This involves up to 100 displaced workers who are currently being treated and uh, cared for by the American Red Cross and City Services. We will have a future update on this incident at 10.30 this morning at the same location. At this time, we're concluding this briefing. Thank you.